We're live. It's camera shop talk with Inglewood camera. And we have uh, one of our regulars here on the show today. Um, his name is Mark and, and thanks for coming on the show, Mark. Of course. Thank you for having me. How's everybody doing? Good. How are you? Oh, good. Good. So I have one super high pressing, high priority item. I just want to kind of start off with to break the ice. Sure. Um, what is everybody drinking? Oh man. You know, today at my door, someone from Amazon or some company, Ooh, water. That's, very, that's, that's good stuff. It's very healthy, Mitch. I have a, because uh, it's water, a simple truth, organic <laughs> seltzer water. I nice. should be drinking beer. Um, are you, is that a Kona? Is that a, um, yeah, it is a Kona. Um, Gold Cliff IPA, pretty good Boom. stuff. My wife bought these at Costco. Nice. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm back to drinking beer. I didn't drink beer for about a week. Oh, no, for so, about a week. Yeah. I was expecting a much longer <laughs> I was like, like, oh, man. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I, again, I, again, I don't want anybody to think I'm a huge boozer. It's, yeah. it's funny. <laughs> um, a, a lot of times when I go out on these photo adventures and I'll talk about all the sign shooting and stuff I do, mm -hmm. if I have even a single sip of liquor, I am just like dead in the water. Right. Um, cause a lot of times I'm shooting 14 hours nonstop driving upwards of 900 miles a day. So, right. um, it's, it's actually pretty, uh, seldom that I actually get the luxury of being able to enjoy a beer. Yeah. I took a um, shot of tequila before we came on, like maybe 45 minutes ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. My, roommate, some good was like, liquid courage. Yeah, my roommate was like, Hey, there's some so shots in there for you. I'm like, Whoa, what time is it? And he's like, nice. Nah, it's, it's, it's time somewhere. So. Nice. So um, first and foremost, I hope everybody is doing well, staying healthy. And I know for us photographers, it's really hard being cooped up, being indoors and not being able to get out and shoot. Um, how many people out there have actually gotten out and have done some shooting? I mean, what have you been doing, Mitch? Uh, I, I have a great view out of right. my apartment. So... I don't really have to go far to get some nice sunset shots. The the when the snow uh, came through the other day, I was able to get some pictures of, of a, a little park that's right out right outside of my place. But that nice. was uh, like a hundred yards, so I don't know that that was really leaving and going out and shooting. Yeah, hundred yards and Mark's like driving nine hundred miles. Right? No, no, no. I trust me with all this going on. Um, yeah. I'm following orders. Um, I, I, the joke now is my, my car typically gets about 25 miles to the gallon and now uh -huh. I'm getting like two and a half weeks to the gallon. Right. I'm like going nowhere, but I, I, I am walking around a little bit, um, you know, wearing a mask and all, and, uh, I've already shot three rolls of film, so mostly just walking around the neighborhood. Um, I did take some, you know, s photos that are kind of sad of all the empty storefronts, but I also shot took some really cool photos, ones that are of hope and ones that are happy of all the beautiful uh, chalk work that the neighborhood kids have done yeah. and just, you know, the flowers and bloom and, um, you know, try, trying to really make the best of the situation. And, you know, what's been a blessing in disguise with all this is, of course, I want to go out and do my next big road trip and I really can't. So I'm actually now cataloging images from like three years ago that have oh, been cool. needing to get cataloged. That's neat. Speaking of so, chalk, yeah, yeah. I thought I'd uh, let's see if I can find it. Chalk. Uh, Are you drawing in chalk on your? On no, your I just I see a lot of those chalk drawings now that I yeah. deliver to houses for Amazon. But this somebody. Oh wow! Made the dude from up. Oh, I, I love that movie. That that's gorgeous. They even put their Instagram. Wow. Uh, yeah, they did. Handle there. That's At crazy in, awesome. In studio. That's in crazy studio. awesome. But yeah, that 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 is like one of my favorite Disney movies. I mean, it's Love it's it. definitely more of a tearjerker. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm sure a lot of folks have seen this drawing, this mural that it's on East Colfax. Of the uh, yeah, nurse, the, the, the new nurse with the boxing nurse. gloves on. So I, I took that. I took that the other day and put that on my live feed and um i i feel with the situation it's it, it it's forcing us to be creative in new ways and uh, people that normally haven't had the chance to be creative are now being able to express themselves creatively even some of these masks i'm seeing that people are making are incredibly awesome yeah i uh i took pictures of the flowers in my front yard the other day let me see if i can screen share them hold on nice 
Um, but up, but up. See if I can. It's gonna let me open my Lightroom. It is. Let's see how how well this goes. Look at this thing. Oh, the file's not there. Anymore. Oh wow! Oh. You can kind of you can still kind of wow. see them. I I high speed sync like uh, my flash, and um, and it was a it was a fun time. I was just laying outside in the garden. That's so, really that's really amazing, Kyle. So it was just with my sixteen thirty five. I don't have a macro lens, so. Wow, um, but yeah, it was just uh, it was a, an adventure, and then like three weeks ago, right before everything like completely shut down, it snowed in the flat irons, and I, uh, I went out to the, to the flat irons and took pictures while they looked like spaceships crashed into the ground. Nice, yeah, yeah. I I wanted so much to get the flowers in my tree, and saw today that the cold pretty much did away with them. Right, I've been like stocking the flowers over at Coors Field because every year we like to take cool scenic photos of like the cherry blossoms yeah. at the field and they're all kind of just poor looking. So oh, it's but, uh, for people who are looking for something to shoot tomorrow, the Thunderbirds are going to be flying over the city for like, I years. heard that. I heard that. So where, where are they going to be flying exactly? I think it's going to go. Uh, they're starting at the air force Academy, right? For the graduation. Yeah. Oh, and wow. The Denver post said they're starting at, what did I tell you, Mitch? 1245. Uh, I think that's what she said. Yeah, somewhere. If you go to the Denver Post website or here, I'm just going <laughs> to tell everyone so they don't have to go. Um, <laughs> so me. Uh, let's see. 12:50 is when they're is when they're starting, and uh, and so I don't think you're supposed to go anywhere like specific to take pictures of them, but um, but look up and grab your You'll telephone hear them. and and You'll just hear them. yeah, they're going to be. I was walking in our neighborhood the other day and just like two F-16s just swooped down. Like they had to be maybe, it always gets a little higher every time I tell the story. I'm not sure how high is high when I'm, when you're thinking of above you, but they must've been a thousand feet above us. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just like right yeah, down the I, middle I of our street. I could have sworn like about a week ago, I, I heard some fighter jets flying around. Yeah, that was it. That was then. So um, nice. tomorrow, yeah, just grab your telephoto lens and get some cool pictures of the Thunderbirds. Or just boost your morale. Or just boost your morale. Yeah. Just fist pump and be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, I, I, I can't wait to see what you capture. I I admit I, I, I'm not doing so well in the telephoto lens department right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> when all this is said and done, I think I need to stop by the shop and get myself a new uh, Sony E-mount lens. So but, get, a, um, get a long prime. You know? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what I'm doing. I don't, I don't have anything long either. I don't have anything longer than a 135, but it's manual focus too. So I'm just, oh, okay. I'll be working during that, but I'm going to have my, I'm going to have an 85 with me. Well, um, heck, you, you just gave me an idea. I, I actually have a couple of 135s and 200 primes and Pentex K mount, which I can then use an adapter to put on my Sony mirrorless. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That'll work. Yeah. So let's get down to business. So we're let's talking, get down to business. We're talking expired film. You shoot a, a lot of film. Not all of it's expired, but whenever, no, you, whenever very rarely. You, you know, whenever you come into the shop, though, you do take a peek into the expired. Bin. Oh my god! Yeah, th that's one thing I have to say. I love about the shop is that expired bin, three dollars a roll. Yeah. Um, I, I I've had some incredible finds out of there, and I I have a lot of the films still here in the freezer. So, Sweet. do we do we want to start off and just talk about expired film and just kind of some of my trials and tribulations of dealing with it? Sure. Yeah. We, I'd, we'd love to know, like you know, should you shoot at the ASA that's on the on the canister, or should you okay. shoot a little slower or whatnot? So. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to screen share. All right. Or if you want to go ahead and bring my screen up. There we go. All right. So this right here, this is part of the other presentation. That's the red yeah. scale image. Um, let's see. Let me just back us out here. Sure. Okay. Mm. Just waiting for my computer to wake up. Right. Sorry, it's not a network issue. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so what we have here is, um, you know, pretty picture of a leaf. Um, uh -huh. This was on expired film. This is Fuji um, NPH, which is a 400 speed film, uh, film that's designed for like wedding photographers and portraits. It's a beautiful film. It's it's now been rebranded under a different Fuji name. I think it's Fuji Pro 400H. 
any case, this film was about 10 years expired. I shot it in my Pentex. Having this been my first roll of film for almost 10 years, because I've, you know, was digital for a long time, mm -hmm. I didn't know that I needed to make an adjustment to the ASA. So this was shot at box speed, and you can tell that it's very grainy and it's lacking color and it just doesn't look very good. I mean, it has kind of a cool vintage look, but right. nothing that I would be really proud of or want to showcase. Um, same here. Yeah. And you can tell that the, um, let me just make this bigger. Here we go. You can tell that there's a lot of green in there and that the frog, it just, it just doesn't look very good. Right. So um, there, there is a general rule to follow in shooting expired film. And the rule is, is to overexpose by one stop per decade of expiration. Um, so to kind of put this a little more in layman's terms, um, let's say that the year right now it's 2020. I had some film that expired in uh, 2000. So mm -hmm. that's going to be 20 year old film. And the other assumption is that the film has been stored um, you know, at room temperature, not frozen, nothing archival. What we need to do is we need to overexpose by one stop per decade. So I need to overexpose by two stops. Mm -hmm. So if it's a 400 speed film, I'm going to need to expose that film at ISO 100. Gotcha. Because one stop from one stop overexposed from 400 is going to be 200 and two stops is going to be 400. Um, I'm going to show, I'm going to basically show some, some really cool pictures here of some film that was very expired. Yeah. Like what's right. the old, oldest film you've ever shot? Um, the oldest film I ever shot was probably this film right here. Okay. This was target brand film, which is made by 3M or film Ferrania. I believe it's an Italian maker. They made a lot of the generic film. This film was sitting in a closet since the early 90s. Um, I don't, it, it didn't have an expiration date on it. I'm assuming it was from like 1990, 1992. Sure. I shot this in 2018. I overexposed it by three stops. Wow. So it was an ISO uh, 100 film, uh -huh. and um, I shot it at ISO 25. That's sweet. And so, so actually, I, I actually, I, I, I overexposed it by two stops and I managed to do okay with the two stops. Um, now I did give a heads up to the lab that this is expired film and that when they look at the color to not, you know, do any major corrections. Sure. But as you can see, even like with this image, um, the color is there. It definitely pops. Yeah. But you you can tell that the contrast, the shadows are kind of pretty muddy, and um, it it has kind of a cool vintage look, but um, it's still very usable. And again, this was film that normally would have hit the trash can. Instead, it became some treasure that I was able to take some really cool images right. on. Let's do a PSA real quick. Like if 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 anyone watching or anyone who watches this video has old film laying around their house. Um, uh, specifically, maybe hopefully it's in your fridge or freezer. Uh, we 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 buy expired film at the shop for a dollar a roll. That way we can sell it to people like Mark. That I'll pay three dollars. Yeah, I'll pay three dollars roll, and it's and exactly. it's really great because you don't. Um, Tim says it's his favorite nude club. <laughs> <laughs> hey Tim, how are you, buddy? Um, but uh, but yeah. So if you have expired film at your house uh, laying around, bring into the shop. Um, we, we, we usually, uh, pay about a dollar a roll. Um, and it's great for test rolls for photographers who are testing out new cameras and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, I, I, I really, I really do enjoy the expired film. Now there, there is another caveat. If the film has been stored in a freezer, it essentially slows down the expiration. And my understanding is film could even be good for up to a hundred years. Wow. And if you know that it's been frozen, there's no need to make any adjustments to exposure. Hmm. But it's still not a bad idea to bracket your exposures. Um, depending on the kind of camera you have, they can do it automatically. If you have a newer film SLR, like a Nikon F100 or a Canon Elan 7, you can program it to expose 
minus one regular and then a plus one. Um, but again, when, when we're dealing with these expired films, I really recommend to use an older camera that you can automatically adjust the ISO. So, um, which will kind of lead me into our next discussion, um, which is on red scale film. Sure. Before we get to red scale, sure. what, what kind of, um, what kind of camera are you using to take pictures? So with with these with these images right here, I used a Nikon FG, which is a a, a semi manual SLR that Nikon released in the early '80s. It with it with these older cameras, and what I was going to get to is on film, you have what's a DX code, and if if you want to just put yeah, the camera back on me, on yeah, boom. Okay, so um, on the film canister, there's this code over here. And cameras that came out in the mid '80s to uh, essentially the 2000s, uh, they try to make it easy for people. Instead of having to remember to set the ISO dial, you just drop the cartridge in, and it'll read this this value and automatically set the ISO. And it's really super handy if you want to save time. But when you're trying to shoot expired film, this could be your worst enemy. Sure. So make sure you have a camera that you can either a uh, completely set the ISO manually or B override the DX coding. And right. I know like on the Nikon F100, the F5, and I'm guessing the Canons, you can always override the DX coding. So please keep that in mind um, to override your DX coding and sure. try to use a manual camera when, when possible. Right on. So I do that with like, Every camera, anyway. If it's a film camera, I go, I overexpose it, and just no matter what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, and that, and you know what? You bring up a good point. So, um, film that's C forty one, that's negative based film. It it's it's really forgiving as far as overexposure. You can overexpose this film up to even four stops. I mean, I don't recommend overexposing it a whole bunch, but like. Right. Kodak Portra, I, I shoot it all the time, one to two stops over, mm -hmm. and um, you don't have problems. Now, if you're shooting slide film, mm -hmm. a half a stop, you can completely blow an image out, so you be really careful with slide film. And if you're going to shoot expired slide film, I recommend that you really bracket the heck out of your exposures. Um, I'm going to show one more example of expired, and then we'll go ahead and put this to rest. So these images right here. Um, let me blow this up a little bit. So this is a really cool motel I found outside of Casper, Wyoming. This was um, Kodak Ektachrome, uh, the Lumiere. This is a roll I bought at Inglewood camera out of that lovely bin. It expired in February of 1997. I shot it in 2019. This was shot one stop over. And I was cringing because with it being slide film, I'm always so afraid of overexposing because you overexpose a slide film, you completely ruin it. Right. This was one stop under. Normally, Thanks. slide film will allow you to go a stop under, and some people even shoot slide film a little bit under to give it a little more punch and contrast. This image here is pretty much unusable. And then if I go, if we look at this one, this was shot at box speed. And hmm. I mean, we can tell that it's a motel. We know it's the ranch house, but again, not an image that I would really want to hang on a wall or be proud of. So what this lesson proved to me too is that this slide film needed to have been exposed by probably one and a half to two stops. Um, but the one stop overexposure at least saved me. This was shot on a newer Pentex SLR film camera that had auto bracketing. So when I click the button, it basically takes three really quick shots, one at normal speed, uh, one one stop under, and then one one stop over. And that can be your best friend when you're dealing with uh, expired film. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, we've... Uh, I have not shot a lot of slide film, but but when I do, it was just through an Olympus point and shoot. So it was kind of doing nice. it. It was doing it for me, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't expired either. I think, I think I actually found a pretty decent role laying around, around the camera shot, but so, so red scale. So I see a whole bunch of, of what looks to be like a negative up there. But. Yeah. 
Yeah. So um, let's let's talk about red scale. Let's first of all look at a pretty picture. Just switch back here. Awesome. So um, this is about the closest we can get to traveling to Mars. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, it, I, I'm not sure if we're going to see it in our lifetimes of being able to visit Mars, but getting out in the New Mexico desert on a two lane road in the middle of a hot day right. and you shoot red scale film, it's literally like being on another planet. It's just such a surreal, cool experience. And if you just look at the way those clouds pop and all the definition, it's just super cool. A really amazing image. Um, so this is a technique called red scaling. It was actually started, it was an ex done as an experiment in some of the movies. Um, what we're essentially doing is we're shooting the film backwards. So film has an emulsion layer, which is where the image is recorded. And then it has the non emulsion side, which is essentially a uh, red sensitive layer. And um, what we're doing is we're essentially we're flipping that film over and we're shooting it first through that red sensitive layer. So we're getting a lot of reds and a lot of the color and the masking. Um, I, I, I did a lot of research on this. And first of all, you can buy red scale film. Lomography makes it and I believe Agfa does. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't worked with it yet, but um, sometimes it can be really hard to find. Right. And then I came across this article of, hey, make your own red scale film using regular film by flipping it upside down. Um, so I did my research and I found out that the best film to use for this is the Fuji Superior films. And I used, for this one, I used Fuji Superior 200. And um, I can kind of film with, that's like at a Walgreens. Um, it, it is. It is. Um, you know, the funny thing is Walmart was closing out a lot of their film. They were selling it for 75% off. Wow. And uh, I, I wound up buying about 12 four packs of the 200. Um, and I, I have a friend in Las Vegas. I'm not sure, Nick, if you're on, but he has an entire cooler full of this film. They, Sweet. yeah, him and, and another friend, they were um, on their road trip scouring all kinds of Walmarts in Oklahoma and they bought, I don't know, hundreds of rolls of this stuff. That's and awesome. it's, yeah, it's, it's really cool film. Um, so what it is, it's essentially this film right here. Oops, there's the camera. It's now, th now this is a 36 exposure roll. Right. Um, this I actually mail ordered because um, the rolls that at the drugstore are typically 24 exposure. Mm -hmm. And when we're dealing with red scale, we're going to lose about four images right off the bat because we're just going to simply ruin them uh, when we roll the film out. So it's a good idea to use 36 exposure and keeping in mind too, with this film, you're going to want to bracket quite a bit. So um, without further ado, um, I can actually walk you through how we yeah. make this film. Sweet. So you're actually going to like take, you take it out of the, the canister. Okay. So that's about where I'm going to stop. Cause if once, okay. once we pull it out of the canister, we, we essentially will uh, expose it. So no, I'm going to stop there. Okay. So I'm going to, what we need to make this happen is you need your film. That's going to be your red scale film. You need an empty canister, which is going to be your donor canister. Sure. Um, thankfully, if you go to the lab at Inglewood camera and you go and you ask Chris back there or Brandy nicely saying, Hey, can I have some canisters, please? Uh, they'll most likely oblige you and give you those canisters. And if you look at this canister, there's just a little bit of leader on there. And I'm going to use that leader to basically re-roll the film. So we have that. Next, we have some really good scotch tape. Um, and this isn't the gift wrapping stuff. It's kind of the thicker stuff. Sure. So we're going to use that. The high quality and that, scotch. The high quality stuff. And then a pair of scissors. Cool. So let's see how I can do this while holding up to the camera. Just going to move this down so we sure. have some surface to work on. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, I just want to again show you the film. This is the non this is the non emulsion side. It's the darker side. It's shiny. The emulsion side, which gets recorded, is going to be a lighter color and it's going to be not as shiny. It's going to be a little more matted. Sure. Um, 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this leader because we're going to essentially splice this roll. Let me just... And it looks like the dog is down here. Look at that. We're getting... Have an additional guest. Photobomb. Exactly. Okay, so I, I cut off the leader, and we're going to keep this because we're going to need this as a template to make ourselves a new leader once this is all done. Sure. So next, right. I'm going to I'm going to take our tape. This kind of reminds me of speech class. Yeah. <laughs> For everyone when who's I, just tuning in, Mark is uh, teaching us how to make red scale film at home. Yeah. Yeah. And. Normally they say don't do this at home, but I highly encourage you to do this at home. <laughs> don't try this at home. Exactly. So again, we want to make sure that we have our non-emulsion side. So I'm just going to add some tape over here. And now what I'm going to do is on our donor roll, we have it as emulsion side. And I'm now going to basically tape that up there. Cool. It's going to be a little tricky to tape. Sure. Is it like an is an is it an exact science or it's kind of got to be right because it's got to you've got to be able to fit it into the other. So you're putting one roll into an old canister. Exactly. Okay. And what I'm basically doing is I'm just taping onto the other leader. Oh, okay. Sweet. So yeah, sorry, it's kind of hard to see. Oh, no, that's right. But yeah, it's it's a it's a little bit of an exact science. And you'd really don't want them overlapping because then you're not going to be able to roll it back into the canister. Sure. So I I already taped one side, and now I'm going to tape the other side to just make sure that it's secure. And then Sweet. I'm going to trim the two. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure everybody sees this on the canister. Yeah. Have you, you should camera, like you maybe. should make uh a, we should have you come make a YouTube video how to do this. How much? So yeah, we could, like, have, a, have a close up of your hands just doing this and <laughs> um and then all the film shooters out there who want to make this at home would be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I'm happy to do that. So now I'm I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim this. The leftover tape. The leftover tape. Cool. So I can roll it right back in. One side is done, and now we have the other. Okay, so I want you guys to look at this here. Yeah. So if you can see the difference in colors, mm -hmm. just try. Do you kind of see the difference where this is darker and then this is lighter? I've essentially reversed the films. Gotcha. This is better. Yeah. So, so again, what's what's in this hand or this hand? Uh -huh. This hand here, this is the roll that I'm going to roll it back up into. And I'm simply going to do this. So I've started rolling it. Sure. Now the rest of it, I'm going to have to roll in a dark room. Because if I do right. it here, I'm going to expose all the film. Expose light. All the film. Now, do you have to tell the lab that, that you did this? Or do yes. they just develop it the same way? Um, so they, they basically, they develop the same way. There's uh -huh. nothing additional they need to do. Um, but a lot of times the lab may start seeing, whoa, these pictures look really bad or, <laughs> this, you know, this film got really cooked, uh, which it did. And so it, it's always a good idea. Anytime you do any of this experimental stuff or if you shoot alternative films is just to tell the lab, give them a heads up saying, hey, this right. is a roll of red scale. Um, it's no different than telling the lab that you need to push or pull some film. Right. Um, so let, let's look at some red scale pictures. Yeah. And, and again, at, at any time, if anybody has questions or whatever, go ahead and put them in the chat. Um, these guys will read them off, and then yeah. um, I can answer them to the best of my abilities. So red scale, uh, because you're shooting through the red layer, it's a lot thicker. It's a lot darker than the normal emulsion layer, so you've got to blast it with a lot more light. Okay. Um, this was 200-speed film. When I shot it at 200, which is what it's rated for. Pretty dark. Very dark. Of course, I'm waiting for my computer to wake up again. It's all good. 
Yeah, power management. It's our best <laughs> yeah. friend. Okay. So that's box speed. This is box speed. This is 200. Um, this this was shot in the Mojave Desert. Um, my uh, good photographer friend Nick Leonard uh, took us to this place and found this um, gas station that's basically in the middle of nowhere in Essex, California. Oh, Essex. And it was yeah, it was really hot there, and um, so I was able to get some really cool shots. And again, use the film to kind of um, accentuate the mood of the environment. So yes, this was shot at box speed of 200. You can tell it's very red. In the next image, I went ahead and I bracketed. Um, what I did in this case, this was again with the Nikon FG. It's a semi-manual camera. I set the ISO. Um, I kept it at 200. Uh, but what I was doing is I was adjusting the exposure compensation. And in this case, I gave it a plus two. And you can tell now that it has a very almost yellowish kind of hue, very orange, and it's it feels hot, which is great because it, right. it definitely it, it gives the feeling of the, the place I was at. Sure. If and you then, asked me, like, and if, it, if you didn't say, hey, this is red scale film, which I didn't even know what that was before today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, you, if you didn't mention that at all and just said, what, what's up with this picture, I'd say it's being lit by like a nuke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i i agree it's it, it it's it's so cool it's such a surreal thing to shoot um this this was the image I, I i posted these on my instagram and my instagram feed if anybody doesn't follow me it's mark 5280 pix mark 5280 pix um i i kind of did a vote i put all three images on the the uh, box speed the two stops over and this was one stop over mm -hmm. this one seemed to really have the best of both worlds it has it ha it has a lot of the red color but it's not so blown out and it doesn't look like it got hit by a nuke okay. it's a very usable picture i mean unfortunately right here in the left hand corner what you see here is a light leak mm -hmm. um, this camera just being older it has this mysterious light leak that i just can't seem to solve sure. um, I think to a degree it kind of adds to the um, the art of the image. I and like then, a good light leak. Yeah, I mean, some people love them or hate them. To me, yeah. it, it all depends on where the light leak That's is. True, where it is in your image. Yeah. This here uh, was a, an old sign that I shot in Grants, New Mexico. And I know that's another part of the talk today is about signage. Yeah. This was shot at ISO 200 at box speed and I, I think it, it came out really nicely. Yeah. I'm really pleased with it. The background, the clouds behind it are like yeah. crazy looking. The clouds were just killer awesome. Yeah. Um, right here, this was shot at one stop over at ISO 100. And I really think for this film, this is the sweet spot. So um, I'm, I'm going to do some more experimentation. I'm going to try using a 400 speed of the Fuji. And I'm going to rate that anywhere between 400 and uh, 100 and sure. see where I get with it. Sweet. And just to kind of show some, you know, last images of red scale. Um, I mean, you mentioned Nuke. Yeah. I would say this right here is a pretty freaky looking picture. You know, actually, before we went live, uh, me and Kyle were looking at some of your pictures. And uh, this was just a thumbnail on my screen. It was really small. And uh, I thought it was just a, like a mushroom cloud at first because of the color. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but it look, it's really cool. I really like that one a lot. Yeah, um, thanks. It definitely makes you feel like you're uh, radioactive. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, so this this was in, um, this is a place called the Very Large Array. It's, it's in the New Mexico high desert. Uh -huh. And these are... Um, radio telescopes and they can reach all the way out into our galaxy and beyond and uh, they essentially take images using radio waves uh, one thing I did want to point out here um, I'm just going to scroll to it now that I'm zoomed in do you guys see the scratch up here yeah okay this is gonna this is a common occurrence when we're shooting red scale because the emulsion layer is now rubbing up against the the back of the camera where you have your pressure plate sure you're going to get some scratching and that's just something you either have to fix in photoshop 
Um, I happen to fix a lot of mine in Lightroom, or you just simply live with it and you just say, hey, this is kind of part of the character of the image. Right. So pro tip on that, uh, there is an app that you can use that I've been using a lot on your phone that like to me is honestly almost as good <laughs> as like Photoshop. It's called Touch Retouch. Huh. Really? Um, it's like two bucks and okay. I use it to get rid of power lines all the time. Oh, really? Uh, and it, it's so easy. You literally just drag your finger across and it magnetizes itself to whatever it sees is, is a line. So that's uh, called Touch. Let me make a note of that. I uh, retouch. He also uses it to, you know, make his face just like one mush for, <laughs> yeah. for selfies. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, that's really cool. But, but it's a phone app. So if I was going to work on a raw image. Well, so if you, if you say you like, that's what I do. I'll do an edit in Lightroom. Uh-huh. Um, and then I'll just leave whatever lines that I was going to get rid of in the first place in the edit. Uh, and then I'll just take that JPEG and I'll either with, with, with Apple, you can airdrop it to your phone and have it the same quality. Or if you have some other device, you can use, uh, you can just email it to yourself and then you can download it to your phone. Okay. Um, I think, I don't know if the, it has a desktop version, um, but huh. I just use it on, on the phone, but it's just, it's just so convenient. Um, to do so and something yeah. like that it would make quick work of right away so it would uh photoshop also has a, a built-in tool I, I can't think of the name right now um but it's it's a built-in tool that's really quick and easy as far as you you basically you mask off an area and it basically will replicate an yeah. area nearby like yeah. content aware yeah so content fill aware. aware yeah yeah um i i had to do that with some medium format film that got messed up somehow got a big line through everything huh so that's that's uh, red so scale. so that's yeah. Crazy. So that, that, that's my demo as far as red scale. Yeah. Um, if you're just joining, go back after this is all done and uh, and watch how he how he basically fed his film into another canister to make red scale film. It's pretty cool. It's clever. Yeah. I like yeah. that. It's cool. I might I um, might have to do that for uh, <laughs> for a baseball game here if we ever start playing. Well, yeah, now would you kidding. would you? So we were just talking to um, who were we talking to about Portra and the. Oh, uh, uh, Alex Burke. Uh, Burke. Right. Oh, Alex. His yeah. his work is so amazing, and he he's an he's a great portrait shooter. He shoots a lot of it. Well, he was mentioning, you know, the whole magic of portrait with the skin tones and everything is that they kind of lessen that red saturation. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. flipped portrait, would you get a less saturated red? That's what I'm scale guessing. Film? That's mm -hmm. what I'm guessing. Um, even even if you look at negatives, if you look at Kodak versus Fuji negatives, the Fuji negatives are going to be a little bit redder and a little bit darker. Mm. Um, so, I, I mean, again, with red scale, it's an experiment. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't look to use Portra. I would probably use Ektar to try red scale with Ektar. Um, but again, Ektar at practically ten dollars a roll. I'm right. like, <laughs> you're, you're like voluntary, voluntarily like yeah. Like, I'm going to be a, a little more hesitant on, on doing that. But again, the the beauty of photography and film photography is um, it's all about you know taking leaps of faith and doing experiments. And um, I did want to mention that this whole uh, technique I walked you guys through this is not something I came up with. It was it was an article that I read off of a, another national photo lab. Cool. Um, that that published an article, and I I just followed their instructions and had really good success with it. That's neat. Yeah, it looks awesome. So. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so yeah, so you can go ahead and take the screen sharing part down. Sweet. Boom. There's our faces. I'm gonna actually start sharing right away again, but I'm gonna go to your Instagram, Mark, because that's oh, kind of where you. a lot of your uh, your phone your sign photos live exactly so um i'm gonna do that real quick and then um we can talk sign photos real quick and then we want absolutely to do, we wanted to do a giveaway um of one of your calendars absolutely and, and um and i i also while you're doing that i um there i i got my gift card um sure so I essentially, I, I, I got a free $25 gift card from Inglewood Camera. What I essentially did is for every $20 you spend on gift cards, you get $25. Um, I bought five gift cards of $20, so I essentially got a free $25 gift card. Um, I purchased this about a month ago. 
Um, I can't wait to go to Inglewood Camera and get my film developed there. So all the film I've been shooting during this event. Cool thing is um, a bunch of stickers were included. I, I absolutely love the Inglewood Camera logo on these um, stickers. So thank you much. And that's kind of my plug. Um, it's, it's a really amazing deal. And it um, you know, just really helps keep the store going while, um, while we're in this temporary shutdown. Sure. We appreciate you uh, buying, buying those gift cards. Uh, we've had almost 100 people buy the gift cards. So it's sweet. It's been it's been pretty successful. I want to hit a hundred so I can brag about it. So we need to sell a couple more. So be like Mark, <laughs> right? Yeah, because yeah. I mean, I'm I'm ultimately going to spend the money anyways, right. and, I'm, and I'm shooting film right now. So exactly, um, you'll probably spend the entire gift card on like all the film you're shooting, anyways. So yeah, plus There's the VIP it. membership you have, you know, exactly, exactly. Um, or or and and I believe the gift card is also good for other merchandise, right? Right, yeah. These gift cards you can spend on anything in the shop. Sweet. Yeah. So, so, so either, either I'm going to raid your film fridge, <laughs> and uh, I, I still, I still have my eyes on that Sony A7 III. Yeah. So I, I love to shoot film, but I also I shoot digital in tandem with film. Sure. Um, Do you ever I, like kind of get your exposure first through? I mean, it's a little easier when you're on a an SLR, as like Alex Burke was telling us, he kind of gets his exposure or his composition through through an actual digital camera, but he's also shooting this gigantic, like piece of He's shooting glass. four by five. Yeah. Um, it's a good question. I, I actually, uh, I, I have several cameras that don't have a meter in them. Um, okay. my medium format Bronica ATRSI. Mm -hmm. It's a sweet, it's a sweet camera, uh, but it has no meter. I, a lot of times will follow the sunny 16 role. Is everybody familiar with sunny 16? Yep. Okay. Um, so I follow that, but when I when I am a little bit in doubt, I get out my Sony uh, A6000 mirrorless camera. Mm -hmm. I I dial in what the film speed is in the Bronica. I I dial in what I want my uh, aperture to be, and then I have the Sony pick the shutter speed. So sure. I, I'm very much I'm an aperture priority shooter. I'm more concerned with my depth of field versus the speed, unless I'm like shooting sports or action. So. Sure. Um, cool. So it looks like you've got my Instagram feed. Yeah, up. everyone. Here's uh, Mark's Instagram. It's Mark fifty two eighty pics. Um, you were on the news. I remember right when you you you'd been coming into the shop for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and then I, I saw you and I was like, that's Mark. He's on the news. But you're on like, was it nine news? Yeah. I, I it was it was really an amazing thing. I I got a I got a phone call from uh, Mike Grady uh, mm -hmm. from Nine News who was referred to me by Corky Scholl, who runs Save the Signs. Um, with the closure of the Invesco, not, it wasn't Invesco, the um, the Mile High Fields, the- um, Sports Authority, right? Sports, can you believe I've already forgotten the name of that company? So Sports- <laughs> it's been gone so, like, I know. Years now almost. I know, so Sports Authority, um, they wanted to do a feature on me photographing that before it all got taken down. So I went out there, I photographed Sports Authority, and then, Nine News followed me on a neon sign walk around Colfax Avenue oh, that's and cool. um, interviewed me and, you know, talked about why I shoot these signs um, all over the place. I, I'm from Las Vegas, so I have this wow. love, love for neon, you know, and absolutely you, you grow up around it. I think I had a neon sign in my bedroom for a long time. Nice. It, was a, it was a clock with a neon sign, um, nice. but I just love neon. So I really appreciate the the neon that you shoot and, Neon Thank can be you. tricky to shoot sometimes. It is. Um, it is hard. <laughs> it is hard. And and if you, I'm happy to share one of my tips for shooting neon at sure. night. Um, again, the, this is this is the beauty of having a mirrorless digital camera. Is I I will typically um, shoot in manual mode or I'll shoot in aperture priority. Mm -hmm. And as I'm looking through the viewfinder, I'm looking at the neon. If it's too bright. I'm either dropping down my um, my aperture or shutter speed, or I'm I'm using my exposure comp, and I'm basically I'm dialing in um, the right exposure to get that neon to pop and not blow out. So even if we look at this one, this was shot on a Sony. Uh, this was shot on a Sony A7 III. Okay. Um, and that camera just has killer dynamic range. 
because if you look at the car showroom, you can see that's all lit up and you can see the neon and the sign and it's pretty black outside. Right. Um, it's just, a, it's, it's just a wonderful camera. Um, but what I did is I is I metered for the neon and I, I dropped my exposure down. And even if you're using an iPhone, mm -hmm. make sure that when you're you're taking that picture, you hold your finger over where the sign is, and you can like pinch your fingers together, and that'll drop down the exposure. Uh, so you want to make sure with neon that you don't overexpose it and blow it out. You want right. to drop your exposure. This was shot on film. This was Fuji 800 speed film. Nice. And and the way I, I do my Instagram, by the way, is mm -hmm. if it's film, I always talk about what film was used, the kind of camera, who did the developing, which in most cases is Inglewood camera, and the date I shot it. Okay, cool. And this is Terrible's uh, yeah. casino in, in Las Vegas, right? It's just right outside of Las Vegas. This yeah. is when we were going between Amboy and Las Vegas. Sure. They have like they own every gas station in that town. I swear. Yeah. Someone yeah. gave me a terrible gift card right before I moved from Las Vegas to Colorado. Oh, really? like, hey, you should use this on your way. You can fill up on gas. And I was like, "There's not a terrible outside of the city." Are you kidding me? <laughs> but uh, but yeah, um, that I love that shot. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, and and the reason why I shoot these signs is unfortunately a lot of them have fallen into disrepair. A lot of them have been basically torn down and demolished. Others of them have been what I consider and my sign crew um, defaced where they basically, they take all the neon out and they try to upgrade it by putting in LED lights and that just completely destroys the aesthetic. Sure. Um, I'm a member of some uh, sign, organized sign photography groups. Uh, one of the groups is called Signs United. We meet on various trips in different parts of the country. Just this past October, we're in Wildwood, New Jersey and we all just love these signs. We love to photograph them. We love, and while we're photographing them and talking about them, we're actually eating at all these really cool mom and pop restaurants. We're staying at motels that have really cool neon at them. Right. Um, so in a way we're doing more than just taking pictures of beautiful neon. We we're creating community. We're promoting small business. Sure. This is, is this on, um, uh, Colfax, not Colfax federal. Um, it, so this is in Fort Worth, Texas, oh, this and th <laughs> this is on this is in Lancaster Avenue, which is essentially like Federal Avenue. It's oh, okay. so much like Federal. Um, I, I'm going to be running an Instagram uh, feature pretty soon about used cars, so I'll be putting more up of this. Oh, neat. So yeah, this was shot on Kodak Portra and the Nikon F100 I bought from you guys a couple of years back. Awesome. And then here's another shot of the the cool neon. Uh, this was shot on Ektar 100, huh? Yep. Sweet. And um, the cool, the the cool thing about this shot is I actually stayed at this hotel. It's a cool hotel. I, it's a really cool hotel, and shot this right from their balcony. So a lot of times, if you're on Fremont Street, you you don't see this back view, and I just think it's a right. cool view, and you can see all of Fremont from there. Right. And I mean, if you go to Vegas, there's Fremont Street, and then there's East Fremont Street, and East right. Fremont Street is where all the classic neon signs are. There's and, some awesome neon there. Yeah, El Cortez. You wouldn't want to stay there like maybe six, seven years ago, um, but they redid all their rooms and. Um, they really hit the the nail on the head with the the hipster vibe. Yeah. Now, and and that hotel, it has a lot of history. Bugsy Siegel started it. It was. Yeah. Or he didn't start it. He he owned it for quite a while. It was he, his place. He, he cleaned the money through it. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. They have some pretty big laundry machines there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Fit a lot of, fit a lot of money in it. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, actually, can you scroll up one? Yeah. Um. Go up one more. See that image with the light leak there? This one? Uh, on the left? Yeah. yeah. So that was in Wildwood, New Jersey. This was off of one of your cameras at the store. I borrowed oh. it. This was off of the Aquamarine um, camera, the oh, okay. 620 format. Uh -huh. And it just has this really cool light leak. Um, but again, this, this shows that um, film photography is is very much relevant. It It's it has a beautiful aesthetic to it. It does. I, I love just like when you, when you get a good film shot, you're like, man, this is, it hits right for sure. Yeah. And what I love about shooting film is it forces me to be more careful in how I compose my image. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more, I'm a lot more planned and I'm a lot more diligent in every shot I take because I know that it can be upwards of a buck a click. Right. This is, this has gotta be your favorite photo you've ever taken, huh? I love that photo. Um, th this, this is on the North side of Philadelphia. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely love that photo, um, which kind of leads me into, um, I, I know you had mentioned, we talked about a giveaway of yeah. my signs on film calendar. Um, that's gonna, that's the December image. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So every year I, I make a calendar of every, of all the travels I've had and everything I've shot on film. Sure. So, awesome. and there's a red scale image on here and one of the cool parts is it's, it's also, it's a very heavy duty calendar. Sure. Um, and I want to thank everyone who's been super generous in ordering these calendars. I have a bunch of Polaroids here that I shot in Wildwood, New Jersey. Oh, neat. This, um, and this was off of the S670 that I, I bought from you guys. Um, but because it's Polaroid film and because I flew in and I traveled, I have a tradition of I find the local camera store where I'm traveling to. Mm -hmm. I call in advance and I ask him to set aside some Polaroid film because you can't bring it on an airplane. Right. It'll get messed up. Mm -hmm. um, and I bought this at a camera store called uh, Cam um, in Philadelphia. Sweet. I love going to camera shops when we when I when I travel. I try to hit up all the ones uh, in any of the cities that I visit. Yeah. Um, and there's some cool camera store shops out there. San Diego's got some cool ones, Minneapolis. Um, so I have not yeah. had any East Coast stores up though. There's a little one in Sedona. Arizona. Yeah, that one's what is it? Um we follow them on Instagram. There's a huge camera store network of Instagram, uh uh or of camera stores on Instagram. So if you if you're interested nice. in all the cool Instagram uh, or cool camera stores on Instagram, just search like camera stores and there'll be a bunch of different ones. So yeah, no, it, it's really important to support, you know, local businesses. And um, I bought from this camera store in Philadelphia, and then I bought some film from a store in Phoenix called Flagstaff. Yeah, Flagstaff camera. Yeah, so, yeah. It's a, it's a cool They're camera. Really cool camera store. And um, it, it impresses me that people were just in there just talking shop. Yeah. There were customers there in the middle of the day just talking and just hanging out. And I, I see that a lot, too, at Inglewood Camera. Um, Photography is more than just taking pictures. It's really about um, become you know educating yourself and traveling and learning about history and also um, fostering community. Sure, I agree. Yeah, I feel like um, that's why all the all the, all of us employees at the shop miss it so much is because we kind of yeah. like get used to hanging out with each other so much, and then and then the customers like you, Mark, that come through all the time. We really appreciate you guys and love talking. So how Mark, we... I got a question. Yeah. Sure. How many miles are on your car? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, if you ask me right now, my car is, is basically, it's not getting any miles, but um, in a given year, I, I put on anywhere between 15 to 18,000 miles. So I, I drive a 2006 Acura and it has 158,000 miles on it. I purchased the car in 2013 with about 65,000. So I've put a lot of miles on it. Yeah. I think the real winners here are the people leasing their vehicles right now. I mean, they're not winning, winning because they don't get to drive their cool right. cars that they're, they, they're leasing, but um, they aren't putting miles on them. So, yeah. Huh? Yeah. So, so definitely, you know, road tripping with the car is great, but a lot of trips too. I've, I've packed up the camera bag and uh, the, the think tank bag I bought from you guys um, I've managed to s fit upwards of six cameras in there and I just bring that on the plane. I, I put all my film in a Ziploc bag and I hand it to the TSA agent. I'm like, yeah, sir, ma'am, can you please hand check this? They've always said yes, thankfully. And, um, I'm on my way in there we go. Have was, cameras will travel. I was going to ask you, you hand check your film everywhere you go then. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, especially now Kodak released an article that they're, they're changing the scanners at all the airports to where they're going to be the same technology as what's used for baggage. Okay. So now more than ever, it's important to hand check all of your film. Sure. Uh, Kodak Alaris put that warning out back in like January. Nice. Noted. 
I'll get nice to see Kodak uh, get a little bit of of a pump now with with social media and everything, kind of yeah. giving them a little bit more or more more younger people an incentive to uh, to go buy a film. It's kind of nice. Absolutely, it, it, it's incredible. I I go so many places now and I see really young people shooting film. Um, we must sell a new a new film camera to someone below the age of, you know, thirty uh, at least once a week. Nice. Yeah. Well, well, your 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 case of Pentex K one thousands. You sell what like a hundred of those a semester? We were we were going through the the history of the K one thousand at the camera shop, and as far as back as our like system goes, two thousand four. I think we've sold almost like at this point a thousand eleven hundred. Oh my god, Pentex K one thousands, and some a lot of times they're the same cameras coming back and forth because we buy them back from students, but uh -huh. but eleven hundred of any camera is just kind of bonkers to me. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah. That's crazy. It's it, it's funny that a lot of these cameras we're using are you know typically thirty years old. And the thing that's nice about the K one thousand is there's not many electronics in there, so it's right. a camera that'll last a long time. But I do have some cameras that unfortunately are starting to hit end of life. Yeah, it's a, that are right. having electronic failures, shutter failures. Um, some of them are just so electronic they won't even fire right. without manually. The F100 is a dangerous camera, right? Because it's such a good camera, and then yeah. it's almost impossible to repair if anything electronic goes wrong. <laughs> I know. I every 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 uh, roll of film I shoot through that camera is a blessing. But <laughs> yeah. the other thing that that's dangerous about the F100 is I still think I'm shooting with my D200. Okay. And sometimes I think it's a digital camera. You look at the back. Well, not just <laughs> okay. that. I just shoot film really fast through. Okay. It. I have to be really careful. Yeah, I'll always because, because the camera is so fast and it handles just like well, because Nikon they they modeled all their digital cameras off of that film camera that in the F5. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I I know Inglewood Camera is not a, a Nikon dealer, and I'm not here to promote Nikon. Yeah. Um, but I, I have to admit, Nikon did a really good job of making their cameras just have such a uniform feel to them. Right. I do like the feel of a of a Nikon. And my first camera ever was a Nikon. Nikon, email us back so we can become a dealer. Stop playing games. <laughs> they're they're very difficult to deal with, from what I understand. And service yeah. is hard. But Sony, I absolutely love Sony. Yeah, we're we're uh, this is kind of a Sony show. <laughs> Every once in a yeah. while, we'll go on a rant about Sony, um, about how we love our Sonys, how we hate our Sonys. It's a love hate relationship. It's yeah, very much a love hate relationship. <laughs> Dude, but Mark, how should we give away this calendar? Like, what should we make people do? I want to. Should we? Should we say anyone who comments below uh, with like the phrase "Give me Mark's calendar" is entered? Or uh, um, I would. We can do that, or we can do like some kind of number drawing. We can have people put in the chat window a specific number, and true. then um, I can just you know. I don't know we how can just randomly get right number. now okay. um, because I can see how many people are watching. It would only be four numbers, but, um, oh, okay. <laughs> but that's not, that's not the, the problem. We can do the giveaway like on Monday or we okay. could do it. We could give it 24 hours to do the giveaway. Okay. Yeah. Over I mean, let's, let's give it some time. A hundred people watching, but um, that's like they've, they've come and gone. So if we did it right now, there wouldn't be a lot of people entering, but I want to sure. give a lot of people a chance to, to sure. win the calendar. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited to give away this calendar. It's, um, it's just a, it's a fun, fun piece of work with, with everything that's going on now. I, I don't know how much, you know, traveling and photography I'm going to get done this year, but I already have a bit of a head start. I, I did some work already in Baltimore early this year. Oh, neat. And, and I got some stuff up in Colorado Springs area. So, were I'm a little bit in the game. Were there any old bay signs? You know, neon signs for old bay? I uh, in Baltimore? Yeah, in Baltimore. I didn't see any. Oh. I didn't what? see any. They're so crazy about their old bay up there. Um, I didn't see any. The the sign that they're really crazy about is their sugar sign. Okay. Massachusetts or like Baltimore sugar. Um, I can't it's can't think of the exact name now it's it's called something sugar it's like one of the most famous signs it's a really it's oh. on top of the factory and it's um Baltimore sugar let's look i'm not sure cookies sugar sugar oh is it uh, uh 
Otter Otterbinds. No, it's it, it's also it's on my it's on my Instagram. Oh, Domino sugar. Domino sugar. There we go. Yeah, so I I, I shot him. I shot it in black and white, at about yeah. I at about five o'clock in the morning when it was still dark. I just opened this uh, Baltimore Sun dot com uh, article and it says in 2014 the Domino sugar sign went solar. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Did that? It's really. Sense? They replace the neon, or is it? Um, um, is it no, it's it's all neon, but I'm guessing that they use solar to basically charge it up during the day, and then they must have some kind of battery array to keep it running. Yeah, because the sign they do shut it. I saw them actually shut the sign off once it became sunrise. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, but the sign itself can take ten minutes to fully light up. It's it's gigantic. Yeah, let me uh, let me sh before we go, uh, let me share this the sign that we've been talking about. So people are like, what sign? <laughs> Yeah, I mean anybody who's been to Baltimore definitely yeah, knows this sign, sign. Everyone, yeah, that's a that's a cool sign. Yeah, it's it's a it's it's just a gorgeous sign. Um, so so yeah, so what what we can do is have people, um, you know, pick a number, let's say for a drawing, and then we can use a randomizer and randomly sure. generate a number, and whoever that is. Um, feel free to forward me the information, and I'll, I I have a brand new sealed calendar. I can just ship right off. Perfect. So yeah, put your choose your number one through say a hundred, one through fifty. Let's do one. Let's do one through fifty. Yeah, one through fifty. Um, look at the numbers before you put you pick. That way, there's no no overlaps. You know, if your number's thirteen and I put thirteen. I get 13. You don't get 13 anymore, Mitch. Exactly. Exactly. And, and then we'll pick a winner, uh, say, come Monday, and I'll tell tell Mark who won. Sound good? Sounds perfect. Sweet. I think uh, we have learned a lot today. We learned about Red Scale. Thank you. We yeah. learned about uh, what, shutter, what ASA you should be shooting your film at uh, if it's expired, um, depending on whether it's been kept in a freezer or whatnot, and, uh, and then sign shooting. Uh, this has probably been one of the more informational. Oh, good. Uh, Thank yeah. you. We're going to have to get your, your hands on, uh, on video loading your red scale film for YouTube. That'll be sweet. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and again, yeah. just want to reiterate it's, it, it's just a process that I found out there and, uh, was just able to just run with. So sure. It's, it's awesome. Yep. And now I'm going to run into my dark room and roll that film back in. Perfect. Sounds great. Good. This has been uh, Camera Shop Talk. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks. You can hang out. I'm going to hit end broadcast, and then uh, we'll all be in our, our room of uh, where all the profanities come out that haven't come out over the last hour. That's know? not there you We go. don't do that. We don't do that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so, God. Cheers. Everyone grab a Cheers. drink. It's Friday. See ya. It's Friday. See ya.